next presentation the next presentation is given by Kim van Titelboom. Uh, he is professor doctor engineering in the Magnell Laboratory of for Concrete Research at Ghent University. Uh, he is uh, she is a postdoc on reinforced corrosion prevention through cell repair of cracks in concrete and currently she is appointed as assistant professor in the research domain sustainable structures and she is focused on cell heating concrete, 3D pinching of concrete and reinforcement corrosion. Okay. Thank you uh, very much for this uh, nice introduction. Uh, yeah, this allows me to skip my first slides and um, to move immediately to the topic I want to discuss with you, self-healing of um, cracks in, in concrete. So in fact, um, yeah, we can find self-healing already in a lot of um, natural materials. Um, the property of self-healing has also been introduced in some high-tech materials like uh, ski glasses, shooting targets. But um, our um, challenge we want to tackle is to implement this in um, yeah, massive uh, materials such as concrete to introduce it into construction materials. But again, we are lucky we have some help from nature because in fact, in concrete, we have some yeah, natural self-healing phenomenon. It has already um, been introduced by, by Esteban. Um, we call that autogenous healing. I will just tell a few words about that, but autogenous healing is limited to healing of very small cracks. So therefore, what we want to do is we want to improve this uh, self-healing technology by engineering the material and then we name it autonomous healing and I will show you several approaches on how to obtain uh, autonomous healing of cracks in concrete. But first shortly about autogenous healing, so that's the natural uh, mechanism, how is it working? So if you have a crack in concrete and water is entering into that crack, um, that crack can heal already due to several mechanisms. Um, you can have continued hydration because there are always some remaining unhydrated cement particles and if they contact water they can hydrate and cause crack healing. Or we can also have um, precipitation of limestone, so calcium hydroxide might react with water and um, um, CO2 entering into the crack and calcium carbonate might be formed or you can also have swelling of the matrix and so on causing this autogenous crack healing. But this is limited to, to small cracks and you can see it here, some examples. So therefore we want to improve this uh, self-healing technology. And um, in our laboratory we are investigating three approaches and I want to uh, introduce them to you. The first approach is where we make use of encapsulated polymeric healing agents. In the second approach we are using superabsorbent polymers. Uh, these type of polymers have already been mentioned before. They can cause at the one hand internal curing, but they can also help us to obtain self-healing of cracks. And then the last approach is where we make use of uh, embedded bacteria to uh, precipitate calcium carbonate crystals and to heal the crack in that way. So the first approach is where we make use of encapsulated polymers. So how do we deal with that? Um, we have um, a polymeric healing agent which is embedded inside um, yeah, brittle capsules. These are positions within the um, concrete matrix and if there is a crack appearing, those brittle capsules break. The content of the capsules is released into the crack and when both components of the healing agent contact each other, they start to react and the crack is healed. So yeah, here in this movie, you can see this principle. So it was um, yeah, taken while I was performing my uh, PhD. So we made um, prismatic um, samples with those capsules inside. So the brittle capsules with the healing agent inside. And you see that at the moment that we create a crack, those capsules break and the healing agent is released into the crack, causing crack healing. Um, here's some results to prove you the efficiency of this uh, self-healing technique. So the main aim is to um, seal the cracks and that was what we investigated here with this experiment. So we made cylindrical samples in which we created a crack by means of a splitting test. Um, some of these samples contained those capsules inside so they were healed autonomously for some other series. We healed the cracks manually just by injection of the healing agent by means of a syringe. And then those cracked samples were placed in a water permeability test setup and we were measuring how much of the water was flowing through these cracked um, and healed samples. 
So here you can see the outcome of this experiment, and you can see that if you place an uncracked sample in this test setup, then you have a very low value for the water permeability coefficients. And if you heal the crack manually, so by injection of the healing agent, we see that we also obtain a very low value for this water permeability coefficients. If we have an uh, untreated sample in this setup, you see that the water permeability is way higher. And notice that we are using here a logarithmic scale. So you have a much higher coefficient of water permeability. But when we include those capsules with the healing agent, you see that the water permeability coefficient is somewhat higher compared to the manually healed cracks, but still we see a reduction of about 1,000 to 10,000 times compared to the untreated samples. So we can mainly, we can really prove that we can uh, seal the cracks. Um, for this technique, we also investigated whether we can yeah, recover part of the mechanical properties. So therefore, we made prismatic samples and uh, we performed a three-point bending test on the samples. And if we compare the load displacement curves for the three series um, under investigation, you can already see that for the samples containing those capsules, that during uh, loading of the samples, there were some drops in loads. And that was caused due to breakage of the capsules. So that was for us a first proof that the capsules which were included in the samples did um, break. But yeah, the main focus was on whether we did regain mechanical properties. So therefore we had to reload those samples after one day. And you can see yeah, if you have an untreated crack that you just have reopening of the crack upon reloading. But if you manually heal the crack, again by injection of the healing agent by means of a syringe, you see, you see again here a peak in the curve, which means that you have regain in uh, strength. And you also see that the first part of the curve is steeper or the slope is steeper compared to the samples with untreated cracks. So this shows you that there's also some regain in stiffness. And the same was noticed for samples with those um, yeah, healing agents embedded inside the samples. More important is if we perform a second reloading cycle, then we see that only those samples containing the healing agent inside did show again a second time partially regain in strength and stiffness. However, yeah, it seems all very nice. Uh, on lab scale, we can show that we do um, get some regain in strength and stiffness. But one main challenge we need to tackle here is in the lab, we yeah, position the capsules inside the, the specimens, but it's not yeah, possible in reality. So in reality, we need to mix in the capsules. But this is quite an issue because at first, the capsules need to be quite flexible to survive the mixing process, as you see here. But then later on, they need to become very brittle, so they easily break when a crack is appearing. And that was where we were focusing on um, in a European project, the cap design project, to make yeah, capsulation materials which can, in fact, evolve in uh, brittleness. Then uh, the second approach I wanted to mention to you is the approach where we make use of uh, superabsorbent polymers. So in fact, we all know this type of polymers because these are the polymers which are included inside diapers. But now we also want to introduce them into the construction industry. Um, yeah, here this mo movie is showing you how these polymers in fact swell and take up liquids if they come into contact with the liquids. And also when we embed these superabsorbent polymers in a cementitious matrix, you see that they swell and they can block cracks when they come into contact with um, water intruding into the crack. So this is also shown here in this movie. At the one hand, you have a cracked concrete sample without these superabsorbent polymers and a sample with superabsorbent polymers. And you see that if water starts to intrude into the crack, those polymers will swell and they will block the crack and prevent further ingress of the liquids into the crack. So in that way, um, they can help to uh, increase the durability of the structure. Um, so at the one hand, these polymers will seal the crack, 
but in fact they d will do more for us they will also cause crack healing because over time they will yeah release the water again which they absorbed when uh, water was entering into the crack and this can promote autogenous crack healing and then mainly precipitation of calcium carbonate crystals so then you have permanent crack healing due to those superabsorbent polymers and here we show you that they can also cause some strength regain so due to the precipitation of the crystals we noticed some strength regain when we included superabsorbent polymers in uh, the matrix the challenge we need to tackle here is that although those superabsorbent polymers can help us with internal curing with crack sealing and with crack healing yeah they also cause a reduction in strength so you see that as soon as we include a certain percentage of those superabsorbent polymers that the strength is decreased so that's something uh, we need to deal with or we try to tackle by modifying the type of superabsorbent polymers we are using and then the third approach i wanted to show to you is the approach where we make use of uh, bacteria to heal the cracks so we have at one hand bacteria and nutrients which are embedded inside the concrete matrix we uh, bring these bacteria into a, a spore forming state so a dormant state so they can survive for a long time inside the concrete matrix and when there is a crack appearing and water is entering into the crack then these spores become active again they start to consume the nutrients and precipitate calcium carbonate crystals which will close the crack so here you can see for a sample with these embedded uh, bacteria how yeah cracks can be sealed over time um, by making use of this technique and that these crystals are really caused by the bacteria can be proven by making use of scanning electron microscopy so here you can see some calcium carbonate crystals and you really see yeah the imprints of the bacteria so these crystals were really yeah formed by the bacteria which were added to the matrix um, this technique can also help to seal cracks that was proven again by using this uh, water permeability test as I showed you before and you can see that yeah if we just seal the crack by means of the injection of a gel that in fact the difference in water permeability compared to an untreated crack remains limited but if we use a combination of this gel and the bacteria we can see that we can reduce the water permeability of the crack here we also showed the efficiency of this technique by means of um, computed tomography so we made scans of concrete samples cracked concrete samples without bacteria and with bacteria and in yellow we show the amount of calcium carbonate precipitation so we had some precipitation in the reference sample due to autogenous healing but you can see that we had way more precipitation in the sample with the bacteria so those crystals were um, yeah, caused by the presence of those bacteria the challenge we need to tackle here is um, that until now we were mainly using pure bacterial strains but they cannot survive in yeah, a harmful environment like concrete so if we just embed them in the concrete without protection they will not survive even if they are spores so uh, the way we are dealing with it now is to make yeah, use of a combination of strains and to make granules out of them so in fact they can help to protect each other so that's um, the pathway we are investigating now in our lab okay thank you for your attention